Hey guys, David Clayton here from GuitarBreakdown.com, and I hope you all had a great vacation break. Uh, we just got back from ours. It was kind of a long, extended, much-needed vacation, but we are back to a busy 2013 already, actually. We got uh, a lot of really cool things lined up, uh, especially with the NAM show coming in town. We got a few guest things we're trying to get to. And then a few other things that hopefully within the next month and a half, two months, will be up and going and you guys will be as excited as we are about that, hopefully. Anyway, with this video, what we want to do real quick is uh, explain the title of it. First of all, this may not be the greatest lick ever kind of thing, but uh, to me, it's an awesome lick. And I remember learning this a really long time ago. Uh, that kind of gives you a hint that it's definitely an older thing. But what we want to do, we left it kind of obscure, and, and usually we put the title of the artist and what the song is that we're actually doing a lesson on. But we left it kind of blank so that you guys, if you guys are interested in playing along, in the comments down below, uh, this is going to be a two-part lesson. So while watching this lesson, if you guys want to guess to who you think this guitar player might be uh, and what CD it's from or what band or anything like that, throw that down in the comments that'll be it'll be interesting to see if anybody can figure this out because again it's it, it's it's off of not an obscure album but it's definitely an older album but it's a player you all know i mean you probably can figure at least that part out and uh what we'll do is in the second part of the lesson we will in the comments or the um description of the video we will put who this guitar player is and uh, a little about where you can buy the cd and all this because this is one of those cds that I think is a must have. Uh, I don't even know if it's actually still in print. I got to do a little more research on that. I'm sure you can find it on Amazon used or something if it's not in print anymore, but it is, uh, it's awesome. The playing on it, almost all the songs, amazing playing and so much to learn from it. So anyway, we will get into this lesson. And like I said, in the second part of the lesson, uh, we will talk about who this is and a little about what's going on. So uh, let's get to the lesson part. Thanks. So right before we get into this lesson, I just want to mention real quick a new pedal that I've been using. Uh, we get a lot of questions about the gear that we use and the pedals, guitars, amps, and all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, our opinion on kind of other stuff uh, that's out there. And we're going to do a lot more reviews. We've done some. Carl's done a bunch of reviews on some amps, some Andrews amps and stuff. Uh, but we're going to do some more reviews on, on pedals and other things like that. So what I want to talk about, though, is I'm using a new Wampler Euphoria pedal. Uh, it's not new. It's been out for a while. I think it was actually called the Ecstasy pedal before. And I've seen a lot of clips on this on YouTube. I've seen a lot of uh, reviews, a lot of great playing with it. And then on their, the Wampler site, uh, I saw a lot of really cool videos on it, too. And uh, they got a great artist lineup as far as people using their pedals. Their pedals get great reviews. And so I've been intrigued with for uh, with this pedal for quite a while. So finally I got a hold of it right before the holidays. And I immediately plugged it in and it's got a three-way switch. It's got a smooth, open and drive switch. And the smooth is supposed to be kind of that more dumbbell-esque kind of really touch sensitive kind of thing, a uh, little less gain and um that was kind of what I was after because I really like for that bluesy kind of fusion stuff, the real where, where you can clean up the pedal by rolling back the volume. And when you roll it totally to 10, you, you don't get a lot of drive, but enough to where it breaks up the amp nicely. And it's very touch sensitive with your dynamics of your picking and all that. And I wasn't surprised because I've heard it you know, on all the video clips, it was exactly that. That smooth setting is amazing. It just sounds so great and it brings out really nice uh, overtones and some of the stuff you play. So I was really psyched about that, but I didn't get much time to play with the rest of the pedal. Um, and I had tried the crunch and the open setting and I, I, was, I wasn't so into it, uh, but again, I didn't have much time to play with it. So after the holidays, I played with it a little more and I liked it a little bit more, but again, I just didn't see where it would fit into my style. The, but the smooth setting was exactly what I was after. So I thought it was going to be kind of a one-dimensional pedal for me. Um, but to my surprise, for this kind of song that we just uh, did this lick on, I usually use the Maxon SD9. 
because it has a certain structure in the gain and actually I don't use the gain that much in fact I usually turn the gain all the way off and the tone all the way off uh, and I just use it as like a volume thing which boosts it a little bit uh, but it, but it there's a certain thing about that pedal that it does actually even with the gain off there it is giving you some gain so I was going to use that for this video, but I ended up trying this Euphoria pedal and trying all the other channels and I dialed in a setting where that crunch setting, which I didn't think I was going to use, just sounded awesome on this. I mean, it was so responsive to my playing. I, I just loved it. So I'm really excited to dive more into this pedal and see how it works. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to touch on that. So now for this lesson, though, uh, it, it sounds great on that crunch channel when I was playing over the track. But for the lesson, I've dialed it back to that smooth setting, and I'm going to use that uh, because it's a little, without trying to cut through a track, um, the smooth setting sounds a little bit better. So that's what I'm using in this lesson. So I hope you guys like it as much as I do, and I'm going to do, like I said, a review on it soon. So I hope you guys stick around for that. But let's get into this lesson. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, just the notes and the lick and get it under your fingers, basically. And then we'll come back at the end like we always do and we'll talk a little theory of why this idea sounds the way it does, how it works, and um, try and get this to be something that you can immediately use in your own playing kind of thing. So the challenge to me is going to be I usually reference the guitar player that's playing this and uh, obviously I can't do that unless I want to play the game by myself which is guess who the guitar player is. So I'm going to really, I mean, it's going to be a little struggle, but I'm going to try to not reveal who the player is. With that being said, this is being played over an A, and it's the guitar player, I believe, is playing an A, just an A bar chord kind of thing where there's no real established third or seventh, so you don't know if it's major, minor, um, or that kind of thing. So that leaves it open because there's only a bass player and a drummer playing the rest of the groove underneath. And that leaves it open for if you want to play major, minor ideas, dominant kind of ideas. And for the most part, you could think of this, though, as A minor pentatonic. And then it kind of gets a little away from that in certain sections. So we'll talk about that at the end, but let's just dive into the lick. The lick starts out with uh, just bending the A note the bar down maybe a whole step or more more than a whole step it just dives and then and then he rips into this double stop where he's playing the eighth fret on both the B and the E string and he bends up the B string a whole step and uses the bar okay so and then what happens is he plays the he, he bends the bar down like a whole step and And he bends that A, A note on the 5th fret on the E string up. So, so you have... Then he goes into a lick where it's basically, again, this is all pentatonic. A minor pentatonic. You have the 5th fret of the E string. Then the 8th fret to the 5th fret on the B string. Then the seventh fret of the G string. So it's. Then he pulls off again from the eighth to the fifth on the B string. So that whole thing is. Then he slides up to the, but you barely hear it. He slides up to that thirteenth fret, the C note on the B string, and he bends that up a whole step. So. And he bends that up, actually he bends that up uh, two, uh, two whole steps. So he bends it from the C note gradually up to, to this uh, E note. So he bends it up uh, two whole steps. So the whole thing is... And when he gets to that, that pitch, that pitch, he just cuts the note off. So, okay. Then it gets into, that, that's just kind of like an intro to this lick. Then it gets into the part that is the actual lick that I think is the cool thing. And it's basically pivoting off of a single note. 
actually two notes, but it starts off pivoting off of this uh, A note, and again, playing over an A chord, it works perfectly, because you're just pounding on that A note. So he plays that A note three times, and that's the tenth fret of the B string. Then he does this pivot note from the C note, and again, this is the minor third. I guess we're talking a little theory now. So, uh, this is the minor third, uh, the eighth fret of the E string. So it goes three times on that A note. Then, so he's pulling off from 12, 8, 11, 8, and 10, 8, all on the E string. So that's. That's the first part of the lick. The second part is. So he does the same thing three times on that A note on the B string, 10th fret. Then he pulls off from this time the 11th to the 8th, 10th to the 8th, to the 9th to the 8th. So. So then it goes to that part where uh, instead of the A note, it does that same thing we just did, but instead of doing three A notes, it does three uh, G notes on the B string uh, eighth fret. So that whole thing is. Right? So the lick is very much or. And it's just going between these three notes or these three notes. So the whole thing. Then it does those three notes again, uh, G note, eighth fret, sorry, eighth fret of the B string. And then it just goes from the eleventh fret to the eighth fret of the B string, pulls off down to the tenth fret of the G string. So. Then it does the pull off again from that 11th to the 8th fret on the B string. So the whole thing is. Then it goes, after it pulls off there, it goes down to the 10th fret and the 8th fret of the G string. And goes back up to the 10th fret of the all on the G string, 10, 8, 10, so. Then it goes back to the 8th fret on the B string, so the whole thing is. When it gets up there on the 8th fret of the B string, it goes down to the 8th fret of the G string, so it rolls over a bar kind of thing, and slides down a half step and it plays the same lick that it just did. Right, so you're playing the same thing, but to get to that, instead of going, it, it puts a note in here and slides down a half step. So you do, so you're sliding from the eighth fret to the seventh fret on the G string. And then you go back up from seventh fret, ninth fret, G string, to the seventh fret of the B string. So that whole thing is. Then it just walks up a scale where you're, or it skips a note here in the scale, but it goes from the eighth fret of the G string to the ninth fret of the G string, so 8, 9, then on the B string it's 7, 8, 10, so. Then it goes to the seventh fret of the E string to the eleventh fret of the E string, so. And it pulls off twice from 11, 7, 11, 7. So that whole idea so far is. goes down an arpeggio so 
goes from the seventh fret. So it's the seventh fret of the E string, seventh fret of the B string, to the eighth fret of the G string. So the whole thing. And it plays that note one more time. So the eighth fret of the G string, then to the ninth fret of the G string, pull off to the sixth fret of the uh, G string, and it uses the bar to dive down. So that whole thing slow is. All right, so that's pretty much the lick. And um, what we'll do next is we'll talk a little about what makes this lick really cool. I mean, it seems really simple, and it is, because all you're really doing is pounding on a note, or this note, right? And then you're just pulling off, or pulling off here. Uh, or you're doing, and then you do kind of a half step kind of thing. But this beginning stuff sounds relatively simple, but there's a reason it sounds so cool, and we'll get into that next.